the London Underground is the oldest underground network. It's 150 years old in January this year. So the first journey was taken between Paddington and Farringdon, a three and a half mile journey. But from that, uh, here we are today using exactly the same network. And earlier this year, we actually did the same journey with a steam train following the same route. If you think about the London Underground and the way it's developed over the last 150 years, it really is the core of the city and the driver of the economic uh, growth of that city. If it didn't exist, London would have developed in a very different way than it has done today. If we took the population of the five, six largest cities within Britain, we will add up to a total of 3.7 million people. And this is how many passengers we have on the London Underground every day. So if you imagine, if you are a shopping center owner and invited every person from those seven cities to come into your shopping center for one day only in a year, that is the, the base of the people that I've got to work with. And that's not going to stop there. So if you look at the census for 2031, the estimated growth of the population of London is 750,000 uh, people in the next 18 years. In addition to that, there'll be 1.25 million extra people working within London. That is equivalent to two full underground trains full of people every week between now and 2031. 4% of the people using our underground station use any of the retail facilities on the underground. 53% will use it occasionally, and 43% use them not at all. So we've got uh, a very big gap uh, to fill, and there's an obviously a, a massive amount of potential that we can actually uh, start, start looking at. So what are we working on? The, the, the types of things we're working on, although we've got a very confined space, very restricted retail environment, and nowhere near the size of unit shops that some of the large shopping centers have, we can bring into play some of the digital uh, the, 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 uh, technology and digital uh, that, can, that digital can bring us. So we're working on sponsorship, advertising, all those, all those core, core issues to look at the very small retail uh, footprint we can deal with, but the intention is to create a single coherent uh, uh, vision for retail where we bring together all those aspects to try and get the most out of the retailing for the customer. So the types of things we're looking at are it's sponsorship, looking at sponsorship of stations, looking at sponsorship of uh, particular events. Advertising is the strongest part uh, of the offer on the underground at the moment, producing probably three quarters of our total income. But we're also looking to improve the quality of our retail kiosks. We're looking at bringing in technology with vending machines um, and also trying to work with, uh, with the internet. Most of our stations by the, the end of this year will be actually Wi-Fi connected. We asked um, a number of architects to have a look at uh, various stations, and this is one of the stations, uh, to come up with their blue sky vision of what they might create if, if, if they had a free hand. So the architects did quite a bit of work, but actually came up with a very, very simple solution, and that is just to declutter the stations, to get rid of all the, the, the uh, transport layers that have developed over the years and take it back to the glory that it, it formerly was. So we reinforce the circle of the station. We try and increase the traditional retail offer. So the area where, where people come out of the ticket barriers here. So th this area is very busy. This is, tends to be quite a quiet area. So the idea is to reinstate these retail kiosks, which were only going to be about two or 300 square feet. So they're very, very small. But the idea is to link those retail units to, to Regent Street and only offer it to Regent Street occupiers. So if you can imagine Liberty or Superdry or Apple taking one of these small, small units, it is a wayfinder to the main stores above ground. But one of the things we learned from doing this study is that the stations are all different and the settings that they're, they're in are all different also. So the retail we provide there has to respond to what's going on outside. And one of the, one of the, um, the ideas is that the experience that we, you, you start the experience on the platform before you actually get onto the surface. The future. 
This is an example of a future tube. With the, the high expenditure on infrastructure and the complexity within uh, an urban environment, we have to look 20 or 30 years ahead to actually plan what we're going to be doing uh, with, it, with the underground system. Alongside that, we're having to plan the retail to actually match that. So that's the vision we've got for the underground over the next 20 or 30 years.